May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him be with you. Amen. Well, today is our final sermon in our stewardship series. You've made it. We've spent all of our time thus far pointing out the blessings that God gives us here in this life and trying to put them in their proper context, trying to put them at the place in our life where God intends them to serve his needs, not just our own. And today we get to the real heart of the matter. We look at really why the part of the pledge that we filled out today was to serve, worship, and learn God's word. Because all of the earthly blessings aside, the reason that we are all gathered here together in this room and those who are watching online have tuned in not because of the money that I have or that the people next to us have, but rather because of the surpassing treasure that we are receiving from God. So, I have a few questions to get us started today. Are you ready for school? Are you ready for a house fire? Are you ready to lose your job? Are you ready for an accident? Are you ready on and on and on? Questions that we like to prepare ourselves and the way that we prepare ourselves to deal with these unknown eventualities, with these upcoming trial struggles or new developments, we buy stuff. We gather the things that we need in order to protect ourselves from the unknown variations of what may occur, right? When you're getting ready for school, where do you go? You go to the store and you get school supplies so that you're ready to deal with the things that are going to come to you at school. You get something to write with, something to write on, or I guess I might be old-fashioned in that. Now maybe you just get a computer so that you can deal with the tasks that are going to be given to you. How do you prepare for the possibility that you could have an electrical fire while you're gone on vacation and your house might burn down? Well, as much as you can prepare for that, you get home insurance and you have a way that gives you some recourse in, in, in case something terrible like that happens. What about the loss of your job? How do you prepare for that? Well, in there we emulate pretty strongly the rich man we hear about in our parable today. We store up in our savings and we try to prepare ourselves for the eventuality that maybe I'll be out of a job and searching for a little while. How do you prepare for an accident? Much in the same way you get medical insurance, so that if something does happen, you can afford the treatment to get better. Well, in our gospel reading today, Jesus poses a similar kind of question. But the stakes in his question are much higher. Jesus is asking, are you ready to die? So, are you? Are you ready to die, even if it's today, tonight, tomorrow? Well, let's take a few steps back real quick. First, let's figure out why is Jesus posing this question to begin with? It seems an odd question, certainly not one you start a conversation off with. You don't say, hi, my name is so-and-so. Are you ready to die today? Somebody might think you're up to something. So let's set up where Jesus is at when he is posing this question. Well, it starts out with a question and an argument, really, about inheritance. Does this sound sort of familiar? Two brothers and an inheritance. If you think back to our first message on stewardship that began in a similar way, and Jesus says first something interesting. He says, who appointed me as judge and arbitrator over your case? In other words, it's not my job to be enlisted by one brother against the other. And he perhaps, you know, it's the second born son begging the firstborn son to give him a portion of the inheritance because he's not getting very much or anything. And maybe the firstborn son respects Jesus, and so he's thinking, maybe if I can get Jesus, this teacher, to tell him, then he'll give me something. But Jesus moves beyond the, the surface argument there pretty quickly and gets to what he then teaches us about. Because he, he knows the heart of the brother and the reason that he is seeking this inheritance. And he says this, Take care and be on guard against all kinds of covetousness. 
Okay, so the are you ready to die question has something to do with coveting. Well, then first, what is coveting is a good question to ask ask ourselves. And a definition, a common definition for coveting is this, to wish for, especially eagerly, something that belongs to someone else. Really, you wish for it so strongly that you would deny them any of their rights to keep it. That's what coveting is. And then we were wondering, okay, so what's so bad about coveting? Uh, There's lots of things out there that I want that I may not have. That's not a bad thing necessarily, is it? Why should I be on guard about that, as Jesus says? Well, Jesus finishes that sentence by saying, For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Why be on guard about covetousness? Well, because covetousness is about more than wanting something. It is wanting something above all else. Wanting something more than what other people should have. It should be mine. So then Jesus teaches by telling a parable. He tells a parable about a rich man. And the rich man is blessed that year with a good yield of his crops. But then he runs into a problem. His storage is not big enough to store this abundance of of harvest that he's been given. And so he decides what he's going to do is he's going to tear down his old barns and build bigger ones. But notice here there's nothing yet. Because I think often when we read this, we think that's the problem. The problem is that he's greedy and he stores more of the stuff and he should have given it away. But that's not the point Jesus is making. Nothing up to this point is incorrect. Nothing that the rich man has done up to this point is wrong. But in verse 19, he says this. The rich man says this to himself. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. There it is. There's the mistake. Notice that he placed his life's well-being in the abundance of his goods. And notice the change in language there too. It goes from talking about life, and what does he say he's, when it, he's speaking to himself? He says to his soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. So he thinks that his well-being, the security of his life and his existence is in the abundance of his goods. And to drive that point home, Jesus immediately brings the main issue to bear in the life of the rich man in the parable, and he says that night his soul is required of him. In other words, he dies. He dies, and he cannot do anything with all of the stuff that he's accumulated, the wealth he's garnered and stored up in these large barns that he has made. So imagine Jesus teaching that and that question is sort of hanging over everyone's head. So, are you ready to die? And often we we hear news or we have a personal experience that forces us to ask that question of ourselves, right? Maybe you have a near-death experience where you're not paying attention and you almost get hit by a car. Or maybe you know somebody who's very young and they die of a disease or an accident or some sort of freak thing. And all of a sudden we're reminded that our life in this world is not very secure. It's fragile. It can be taken away by many and various things. And the fact that you have no idea when that will happen. So what is Jesus saying here by posing this question? The rich man's error was not that he had an abundance of things. God blessed him with those. Nor even was it how he used them. But the fact that he placed his trust and his well-being in his possessions. And what Jesus is doing here is he's warning us, teaching us and his disciples to be wary of covetousness because it leads us to place our well-being in the things that we own. And how easy is it to do that? I often have this reoccurring thought. I get nervous about having enough money. 
Because as you may know, I joined this profession because we get paid lots of money. (laughs) But it's easy to get worried about money, isn't it? Maybe you had to fix something on your car unexpectedly, or you had to pay a little bit more in your taxes than you were planning on paying. And all of a sudden, things aren't quite what they were even two months ago, and you're worried, how am I going to make ends meet? What happens if something else breaks at my house? Can I afford to fix it? And despite the fact that God has provided for you, maybe not exactly in the way you expect, but He's always provided enough for you to live and to take care of yourself, we still worry. I find that funny in my own life. I I worry about that despite the fact that the track record should indicate by all reason that I should fully trust God in His provision because He's always provided for me. And yet, it's still so easy to place my security and my hope in having that stuff, that buffer from the unknowns of life. But the reality is sometimes not like that. And we know that. Some part of us knows that, that it could be that tonight you're driving home from work this week or from home, home from church today and somebody has been drinking the night before and they hit you and your life here on this earth ends. And then what good is having $2,000 in your savings or $200,000? Now, it's not, now notice that Jesus doesn't really pertain, his parable doesn't pertain to anyone the rich man knows, but the soul of the rich man himself, because that is God's concern, is your soul. So, are you ready to die? Or maybe phrased less provocatively, what preserves your life? Well, it's pretty clear here that Jesus is teaching us, it's not our stuff. There isn't anything wrong with your stuff, but it is of no service in preparation for the preservation of your soul. You don't buy an oil change kit in preparation for school, so it is that you don't store up earthly goods for a heavenly eventuality. It's just not made for that. So what are we left with then? If it isn't in these riches and abundance of earthly life, all the things we normally find our security in the unknowns of the future in, what is it then? How do we prepare ourselves for life eternal beyond death on this earth? Well, Jesus gives us a hint with the last verse of this section. He says that the rich man was not rich in God. That's the goal, is to be rich towards God. But how do we do that? How am I rich toward God is the central question of a faithful steward. That's really what all of this stuff has been about, the way that we use our earthly goods, recognizing where they come from, being thankful, and not only being thankful, but giving thanks, are all to serve this question of how am I rich towards God. That is the number one concern of a faithful steward. He wants to use the things entrusted to him faithfully, but not just for that reason alone, but so that he is in good standing with the master when he returns. So let's summarize our series here as we close our meditations on stewardship. Let us close by pondering what our heavenly treasure is, the heavenly possession that each one of us has been given in Jesus. After all, this inheritance, which began our meditations back with the story of the prodigal son and now end them today with this question of one brother to another where Jesus, tell him to give me some of the inheritance. But did you know that in the scriptures, your salvation, your life in heaven has been described in the same way as an inheritance? That we, that you and I and the people sitting around you are fellow heirs or inheritors of salvation. So first, we recognize our situation when it comes to the blessings we have. That was what the story of the prodigal son was about for us with stewardship. Recognizing the situation we're in. That with God we have abundance and without we are like the son who wishes to eat the slop from the pigs that he's taking care of. 
The second thing we learned is that we are to be more than just thankful for what God gives us, but that we are called to give him thanks in return for those with the story of the ten lepers. We learned that all ten of those lepers were certainly thankful that their disease was cured, but only one returned in recognition of the thanksgiving that needed to be given to the one who gave such a gift. And third, we learned that we are to love others through the way that we use these gifts. That God has given us these blessings and trusted us with these abilities and gifts and time and our bodies in order to serve his mission of sharing the love of Christ with those in our lives. And today, we are learning that we are not to place our security in our possessions, to not place our hope and our life in them, but be in being rich toward God. Well, there's one thread that ties all of these teachings together. They are all rooted in the faith of our heavenly possession, which is Jesus. The life, the forgiveness of sins, the salvation that he has promised that have been made yours in Christ. Your riches toward God are not earned through an investment or through your work or ingenuity, but given by grace. So as we make our pledges today to serve, remember to recognize that you are now children, inheritors of God's grace in Jesus. Give thanks for such a gift freely given. Share the news of that free gift in the way that you use all that has been given to you. And lastly, as we meditate on our gospel reading today, do not stray from placing your hope in this new reality which is yours in Jesus. You are rich toward God, not because of all the stuff that you have stored up in your life, not because of the many blessings he's given you on this earth, but because of the gift of salvation freely given in Jesus. So meditate on that. Think on that as you contemplate your role as a faithful steward. Secure in the hope of your heavenly possession, which is yours in Jesus, you are now free to do what he commands when it comes to caring for others and sharing that love through the way that we use what he has given us. In the name of Jesus, amen. May this promise, this hope, this inheritance, not earned but given, guard your hearts in Christ Jesus until he comes again to bring us to our new home forever. Amen.